Today, we're going to be talking about the upcoming summer events coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms, as well as the update that was sent out by the developers to the player base. And finally, I finally migrated. What's going on, guys? Cheers. Today's video is all about summer vibes, so you know we had to crack open a hard seltzer. We got that fruit punch, and honestly, these beverages get a ton of hate, but guys, they literally taste good. Don't even try to lie to me. It tastes delicious. I don't care what the perception is. Anyway, in case you guys were wondering what's on the screen, Omniarch, what are we looking at here? This is a new upcoming city skin that's going to be released with the new summer events coming in Rise of Kingdoms, and today, we're going to be talking about that. Guys, the news and the leaks have been pretty slow ever since the Vikings came into the game. That was like a huge update. Rise of Kingdoms seems to be pushing out tons of ads, just promoting the game right now for the summer of 2021. Lots of new players are joining the game. It's really exciting. It's really great for the community. So like I said in the intro of the video, I'm going to be talking about my migration a little bit later in the video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But guys, about 80% of you guys are not subscribed. So make sure you go down there and click that sub button. It helps out the channel a ton and it'll help you stay up to date with all the latest Rise of Kingdoms events, leaks and news like we're going to be talking about here in this video, such as the Blooming Court. That's what you're looking at here, the Blooming court and we're gonna get into that in just a minute now unfortunately i don't have leaked screenshots of all the summer events coming up soon and no i don't know the exact date that these events are going to drop but i do have all the information on them and it should come as no surprise that it is pretty much a copy and paste of last year's summer events they changed around the event items and the event theme very slightly but in general it's pretty much the same thing however i know that a lot of you guys are probably new to the channel a lot of you guys might be new to rise of kingdoms so we're gonna go over this event and i'm I'm hoping that by bringing this information to you you can start planning for this you can start maybe saving up some ap potions to do some barbs as you can see here on the screen so the events that we have coming up here for rise of kingdoms are called long summer days gathering wood campfire dance bright gifts zenith of power and training with lohar so it's pretty much the inverse of last year last year they did the summer night memories and now we're doing long summer days <laughs> Honestly, that might be pretty much the same as the 2019 events. I don't actually remember. Anyway, the long summer days event is going to look just like many other holiday events that you've seen, especially the one that you see on the screen here from last year. It says the event will last eight days in the first five days three additional events will open every day so that's like you see here daily business field collection academic elite you guys are familiar with all this if you've played the game for a while rulers can get branches by completing additional tasks in the first seven days on the eighth day all holiday tasks will be blocked but the rulers will be able to pick up additional rewards from the chests for events depending on the number of completed tasks you'll get different rewards the branches can be used in the campfire dance event we're going to talk about that event in just a second it says chest rewards include sculptures of epic commanders so that's going to be this chest right here so guys you're very familiar with this okay you're going to want to do every single event from every single day in order to maximize the amount of rewards that you get here now of course this is the, these events uh are, are linear right so you don't have to get 100 out of 100 to get the best rewards you know if you get 98 out of 100 it's going to be fine if you're a brand new player and you're trying to max out those epic commanders this is going to be an incredibly good event for you because you're going to have the opportunity to get 100 universal epic commander sculptures and I know if you've been playing for a long time or you're a mega whale, that sounds completely ridiculous. Why would you need those sculptures? But honestly, if you're a brand new player, this is an event to do if you're still trying to max those epics. Now, the campfire dance event is going to look just like last year's Sea of Fireflies. It says during the event, add branches or buy embers for gems to get chest points. When you reach the maximum points, all alliance mates with 50 plus health points can open the chest. Each ruler can open up to 10 chests per event. So as you can see here, it's the same thing as last year you see there's a 10 here so this is an alliance based event your entire alliance is going to be adding to this campfire and of course you can use some gems to get that premium item however unlike last year it looks like it's going to be only 50 gems to obtain this premium item and i they did actually make this change a few holiday events ago so this again is not really anything new just a little bit different from last year but the same general idea this says branches and embers can be exchanged for prizes in the bright gifts event which is going to be basically this redeem shop right here governors get one point each time they use a branch or gems when your alliance reaches 20,000 chest points and your contribution to the event reaches 500 points you can receive the corresponding rank rewards some time passes between the end of the event and the final counting 
slash sending of alliance rank rewards by mail to avoid accidental losses do not leave the alliance immediately after the end of the event so that is a big warning the gathering wood event is going to look just like last year's summertime collection event and it says during the event rulers can find branches by collecting resources on the city or on the map as well as defeating barbarians the branches will be mailed branches can be used in the campfire dance event earning points uh for alliance chest so that's pretty straightforward finally the bright gifts event is going to be where you exchange those items whether you know it's branches that you get or the premium ones that you can get with gems or from the event bundle which we will talk about in just a second i imagine these rewards are going to be very similar to what they were a few holiday events ago when we have pretty much the exact same type of event now a few months ago obviously you guys remember we had the springtime event that was very similar to this and hopefully like last time we'll see some other rewards just like this where you were able to choose a blueprint for an epic accessory i think this was a very popular reward that players could get especially because it's pretty difficult to get uh, blueprints for these accessories at least in bulk so this is a great way to get players uh, you know get their hands on these blueprints and of course having the epic materials here was incredible as well this was a huge incentive for me as a spender to actually max out the bundle and right now i'm really trying to get more uh, materials for my concealed dagger so that would be incredible if we could uh, get something like this again so seriously like i said before this is all sort of copy and paste hopefully the rewards that we'll see again line up to something similar like this that we saw just a couple months ago it's also worth noting that there will obviously be a holiday bundle like there always is this bundle is going to be called the scented breeze pack and i imagine it's going to look pretty much identical to the spring event that we saw just a couple months ago as well if you've been playing rise of kingdoms for a while then you know that these types of bundles are typically slightly better value than other bundles that are available in the shop and they're especially especially better value if you're a player who hasn't maxed out your buildings you haven't maxed out your t5 tech you're still getting pretty good value from the gold keys for example so if you are a low or medium spender then typically this is where you might want to spend a couple of dollars but of course there's going to be plenty of opportunities to get a lot of value out of this event as just a free-to-play player as long as you're active you're doing those events every single day now we do quickly want to cover the face-to-face -face with the developers part six that was sent out just yesterday at the time of recording this it says greetings governor of the rock team has always been committed to hearing valuable suggestions from governors all over the world that sounds like cap to me but you know it is what it is and to providing the best gaming experience possible in this face to face with developers we'll talk about some hot topics blah 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 okay wait i need water So the first question is beginners immigration can only be used once now why make that change and the answer was we found that new governors have been having a harder and harder time in the face of increasing numbers of veterans with a habit of moving to greener pastures that is keeping their city halls under eight and immigrate to newer kingdoms just before beginners immigrations expire so we have limited the beginners immigration to try and improve this situation and we'll continue to look at new ways of fine-tuning it in the future so this looks like a way of sort of nerfing jumper accounts in, in in a sense and honestly i think that's fine i think the whole jumper account thing is you know it provides tremendous value for those who are players who know how the game works and they're really committed to making the best uh, account possible and i think if you're willing to go through all of that time and effort to make a jumper account then you absolutely deserve all those rewards but 99 percent of the player base is not going to go through all that trouble so it really is sort of an unfair advantage because if if you are a jumper player that means you probably know the game really well and you're going up against a bunch of players who just downloaded the game and they don't even know what alohar is so the fact that you're just gonna be able to just dominate that entire server you know it, it is what it is right no am I, am I saying that that's wrong i i don't think so right again you should des you deserve that advantage if you know the game well enough but i can see the argument from of this perspective as to why they would want to nerf this because if new players have a terrible beginning game experience then they're just gonna quit that is just the reality they're just going to get their bit their cities are going to get burned they're not going to know how to teleport or use a peace shield or anything like that they're just going to get wiped out and honestly they're not going to keep playing and and that's just not good for the game so uh while many players are probably upset about this and i can totally understand why uh, i i can also understand it from the perspective of the developers and you know wanting to preserve that new game experience for new players and i think that that makes sense how much this is going to impact that i have no idea i've never been a jumper player 
player i'm not a veteran on that i don't know too much about jumping honestly uh but it is what it is let's move on to the next one it says you can end up in a situation where you find insufficient troops to use in osiris league if your kingdom is also currently involved in a kvk is it possible to stagger the league and kvk at different times and the answer was it would be quite difficult to stagger the osiris league and kvk at completely different times because kvk takes place at different times for different kingdoms we're looking to resolve this problem from another angle but require more time to finalize the solution and obviously that makes a ton of sense right you know it, there's just no way there's just no way for them to to time this perfectly the solution lilith if you want to know the answer is to just give everybody a set amount of troops and access to all the commanders i mean if we're talking about osiris league right we're talking about the best of the best it's way more interesting if everybody has access to everything right that just it makes the most sense right and honestly i'm not a game developer and i, I don't participate in osiris league so you can crucify me in the comment section below if i'm completely you know out of tune here or if i'm totally off base but it just seems to me like you know when you play league of legends right the best teams in the world have access to pretty much all the same stuff am i wrong you have all the same champions you're on the same map etc so in this instance if we want to see who's actually the best when it comes to osiris league then what you would want to do is have everybody on a sort of level playing field so i don't know that's kind of just my assumption if i'm completely wrong just roast me in the comment section below i'm used to it by now the next question was equipment loadout is a great feature but if the gear is currently equipped to another commander then you have to remove everything before you can re-equip which is annoying and it says this issue has come to our attention and we will be optimizing this feature in the latest update i agree with this i totally understand that uh, I, this happens with my zenobia right when i have to when i put equipment on zenobia uh, it pulls equipment from random other commanders and then i have to go back and figure out okay like whose gloves were these whose helmet was this whose play so i understand this uh hopefully they have a good solution for this uh you know this is just a quality of life thing next question is could you add more ways for us to obtain skill reset items and it says we have organized some new ways to get new skill reset items so congratulations they're adding this again and this is great news if you're still going for that 5155 guan yu which is something that i've recommended in a previous video that you should be going for because it's an incredibly good value for an insanely good open field infantry commander so best of luck to all of you i heard from the lilith gods they literally just called me a few minutes ago they said if you drop a thumbs up on this video you're going to have incredibly good luck with getting a 5155 guan yu if you don't believe me just go ahead and try it yourself if you don't get it you can always come back and remove your like from the video but don't unlike it because that would crush my ego the next question was are we going to see holiday events with new all new gameplay and content it says we're currently looking at some new and improved holiday events with a more festive spirit which we should be able to present in the next few months so this is exciting obviously this is not going to be coming for the uh summer event that we just discussed but uh you know moving forward maybe we're talking about october with halloween or maybe christmas new year's things like that hopefully we'll see a refresh of these holiday events because honestly they are incredibly stale they were stale a year ago so the fact that they're finally getting around to it now is nice if you guys played rise of kings when it first came out the original halloween event actually changed the ui for the entire game and it was a nice touch honestly it, it's it's just it's nice to look at it's kind of cool i thought it was cool at least so hopefully they do something similar to that with a refresh of the actual event itself the next question was tier 5 units healing uh healing is too expensive and yeah a big true big true their answer was we added crystal technologies and season of conquest which can decrease the healing cost for tier 5 units we're also looking at this issue in other ways but we're very careful when it comes to changing resource uh costs and all such changes will need to go through a period of testing and analysis and honestly this makes sense as well if i'm not mistaken back when the game first came out i think it was twice as expensive to uh to train and heal t5 units if i'm not mistaken it, it may it's something along those lines so the cost for tier 5 believe it or not is significantly nerfed than when the game first came out so you know that's why they're so careful about this stuff but regardless it's still way more expensive to heal t5 than t4 no matter what angle you look at it from so i myself am really looking forward to a change here because it really just you just don't want to use t5 like unless you're a mega whale you just don't want to do it because it costs so much gold the last thing they talk about here are things that the team has been focusing on a lot recently the first one is we've been getting a lot of suggestions from players in regards to the equipment system which we are using to make some improvements that are still currently under review we hope the modified equipment system will be able to enhance the rock experience and look forward to informing governors of these changes as soon as they're confirmed so this is really exciting uh they've already as you know gone through a massive change in the equipment system already and honestly i feel like the current equipment system is way easier to learn and way easier to to you know focus 
focus on than it used to be so further optimizations here are exciting for me and hopefully they're going to change the way that perhaps crits work i think nobody's really happy with how crits happen special talents on equipment are a big deal you have a huge advantage and right now the odds of getting one are very low and it's very expensive to guarantee it especially if we're talking about legendaries like it's it's just so crazy right so hopefully they change that system at least but if they have other optimizations that are generally good for free to play and low spenders i'll be happy about that the second point they have to make here the way we design kvk is one of our most important tasks and we are constantly looking at it we will be releasing some new content in this spirit in the next few months which will play differently to the current season of conquest for instance we're exploring some all new terrain and mechanisms to add to the new newest season of conquest stay tuned so there is always that trojan horse that we haven't seen quite yet as a kvk format they also did mention a couple of months ago naval potential naval battles or ship battles coming into rise of kingdoms so i don't know if they're still playing with that feature i think that would be incredibly cool uh however if it's really expensive then i don't know i'm not that excited about things that are only for the whales but um new gameplay and an exciting refresh to kvk is much needed so hopefully they make that change happen uh, and again hopefully it's good for free to play players this you know that's really all i care about at this point um if we don't have a free to play player base in this game the game will die 1000 percent and the game is already getting to its older stages of life right so we really need to make this game a lot more fun for the play free to play players and that is pretty much the the entirety of this face to face with the developers overall i think this one wasn't as exciting as the one where they talked Talked about uh, skill resets and things like that I think a lot of players were hyped about that this one was a little bit more mild but again we can look forward to those changes to the equipment system which is good and finally I did promise you guys that I would talk about my migration here at the end of the video so drum roll please we're going to be revealing the kingdom that I did eventually migrate to and that is 1568 this may look familiar because this is a kingdom that i was in before this kingdom is relatively unrecognizable from the last time that i was here it is virtually a one alliance kingdom the wu tilla clan these guys are actually some of the best of the best i mean this is a really small kingdom right uh, but there's some absolute powerhouse monsters in this kingdom so i'm really happy to be here uh, i really thank them for opening their uh, their arms to me i was recently obviously zeroed if you guys missed that video go ahead and check it out so they know sort of uh, what i'm what i'm coming from and i think they have relatively high expectations for me so hopefully i can uh, meet those expectations and and hopefully exceed them i just want to thank all of you who reached out to me inviting me to your kingdom i did see all of your comments on my video lots of you reached out to me over on discord as well in my discord and also in private messages and i would love to be able to join a ton of your different kingdoms and there were a lot of other kingdoms that i was strongly considering for no other reason than because they've just had such a really friendly community that's been very helpful for me in rise of kingdoms and honestly if history repeats itself there is an opportunity for me to migrate again in the future so obviously Obviously, I never migrate to a new kingdom with the expectation of ever leaving, but unfortunately, that hasn't been the trend for my time here in Rise of Kingdoms. So, if all goes well, I won't have to leave 1568. Uh, that's not a plan of mine. But for those of you who did invite me to your kingdom, again, thank you so much for the kind words and the invites and people just wanting to play with me is really, you know, it just makes me feel good, right? So, in the future, who knows what the future holds hopefully i won't have to migrate ever again but if the time does come then i will consider your kingdom once again anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video you are a true king you are the goat if you found this video entertaining or useful or informative or anything like that drop a thumbs up on it it really does help out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm and shown to more rise of kingdoms players if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and of course comment down below your thoughts and opinions on the upcoming summer event it's very similar to old ones and comment your thoughts on the face-to-face -face with the developers i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below and lots of you have realized that i do respond to many comments especially on the first day that i upload these videos so get down there let's chat as always if you're wondering how i'm playing rise of kingdoms on my pc there's a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free 
for your PC. It's a program called Blue Stocks. It's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. I've used this program for years, and honestly, I love seeing this game on a much bigger screen. Like I said, it's free to download. It supports the channel a ton, and if you don't like it, you can always uninstall it later. Finally, my social media links are in the description below, so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, all that stuff. It's always down below. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.